motorcycles to be reduced in number and has they should be riding at by at the rear bumper. So that gives a complete open shot to whoever wants to shoot the president. Nobody there to interfere with the shot. Nobody on either the left or the right side of the presidential limousine. So Johnson changes the motorcade. Notice that after he's hit, Jackie's reaching backward. But look at the motorcycle patrolman. They're doing what they're told. They're at the rear bumper. And there are no motorcycle patrolmen on the sides of that car. So the grassy knoll gunman is James Files. I interviewed him over the course of 10 years. I would send him an email, I'm not an, I'm a letter, and two months later he would reply. I would send him trick questions because a lot of people said he was a liar. And I would ask, do you know this guy? And I'd just make up the name to think if he was just going to BS his way through. He didn't fall for anything that I sent him. Everything he said seemed to be totally within reason. Okay, and I'm very conscious of the fact that many people say John, James Files is a liar. So Files said his job was backup. He was waiting for Kennedy to be hit, and his job was to fire at Kennedy if he had not been hit in the head. So he's at the grassy knoll, 35 meters from John Kennedy, and he fires because he doesn't see Kennedy hit in the head. And so when he hits Kennedy, Kennedy falls violently backward. Now, a blow up of frame 313 of the Zapruder film shows that he's using a frangible mercury round that explodes on impact. It hits Kennedy in the right temple and the a motorcycle patrolman behind Kennedy said, I was covered by a bucket of blood. Behind, hit in the front, everything goes behind. All right, 10 feet behind. Now, that's not what the media said, okay? So uh, Dan Rather's a young correspondent. He's making a name for himself, covering it. Four people were allowed to watch the Zapruder film, and then it was closed down for 12 years. So Dan Rather is telling the American people about the Zapruder film, and he says the president was shot from behind and fell violently forward. Notice how Dan moves his head forward to show the shot came from behind by Lee up there behind the president. Okay, not true, Dan. The president is hit in frame 313 and three tenths of a second later, he, his head flies 10 inches backward, and he's falling backward, not forward, Dan. Now, Dan, in his memoir, 14 years later, said, I was wrong. Thank you. But by, by that time, everybody, all, the, all the, the, the busy bees got together and said, you see, the Warren Commission is telling us all the truth. But a lot of people who were not necessarily featured in the Warren Commission report said the shots came from the grassy knoll. Okay, uh, the majority said the shots came from the grassy knoll. Headshots seem to come from the right front. It seemed to strike him here and uh, his head went back and it, all of the brain matter went out the back of the head. It was like a red halo, a red circle with bright matter in the middle of it it just went like that it was a a terrible time you cannot imagine seeing this you you knew it happened but you didn't want to believe it the particular headshot must have come from another direction besides behind him because the back of his head blew off and it doesn't make sense to be hit from the rear and still have your face intact so he must have been hit from another position you know, possibly, you know, in the front or over to the side. I, I really don't know where. But the back of his head blew off. So I am very dead certain at least one shot, including the one that took the president's skull off, had to come from the right front. And I'll stand by that to my death, over my mother's grave. Well, James Files said uh, he was the one who did it. Okay, and you can look at the photographs, again, not particularly featured in the Warren Commission, but people are definitely oriented towards the grassy knoll and running there, police and others, and uh, 
Files took his weapon, put it in his briefcase, picked it up, walked behind to, uh, to a car, and picked up Rosselli and Nicoletti, and off they went. Now, where in God's name was Oswald during all this? So that we, the, well, that's the lunchroom of the depository. And uh, there's a secretary in the depository who said she saw Oswald eating lunch at 12.15. Well, the president is killed at 12.30. And don't forget, the president is five minutes late. So Oswald is going to kill the president of the United States at 12.25 when he's supposed to arrive, but he's having lunch at 12.15, and he's going to go up to the sixth floor and then kill the president of the United States and run down and have a Coke, where a policeman is going to confront him drinking a Coke. And... Uh, they asked, was he winded? Because he must have run down all those stairs. Well, the book called The Girl on the Stairs, she ran down the stairs. She said she didn't see anybody running down the stairs. Warren Commission timed it, said he had to run down those stairs. He must have been winded to get there that quick. He never was up there. He ate his lunch. He bought himself a Coke. Policeman came in and said, what are you doing here? Okay, maybe he stood in the doorway to watch President Kennedy, but he wasn't up there firing his weapon. Okay. And if he was, man, did this guy have cool that he was eating lunch and then thought, I think I'll run upstairs uh, and kill the president. I don't have to be standing there for a long period of time. I've got it all worked out. It's five, six minutes. I'll be up there. So or, I don't want to be too ridiculous here, but uh, there were a number of witnesses. 39% of the witnesses said they saw, heard shots from the depository. So if it wasn't Oswald, who was it? Okay, I mean, that is a question that conspiracists need to deal with. Well, we have a few candidates. Uh, G Sam Giancana, in his book, said Richard Kane with horned-rimmed glasses, an ex executioner for the mafia. He was in the depository. Another possibility is this guy, Jean Sutra, the Corsican assassin, never mentioned by Giancana, but definitely mentioned by Howard Hunt hired by William Harvey, the man who actually came to Texas. But this is a wow. Okay, watch. I, I saw this and I said, oh my God, I can't believe this. French intelligence, this is withheld for 54 years, okay? Nobody knew about this for 54 years. And now we find out about it in November. French intelligence authorities requested we make inquiries Concerning the subject, a militant member of the anti de Gaulle terrorist group reportedly in the U.S. for a brief period in late 1963. Subject reportedly need, re, used names of Michael Rue or R Michael Murch. Uh, he uh, previously obtained information showing it was Michael Rue. He entered the United States November 19th in New York and he left on December 6th, from Laredo, Texas. There's a French assassin, comes to the United States, leaves uh, uh, 10 days, uh, two weeks after Kennedy's shot, out of Texas. Okay, thanks for telling us that, 54 years late. Okay, there was a French assassin in, the, in Texas at the time, nice to know. A third possibility, is the CIA's favorite, the best assassin in the CIA, David Morales, who had dark skin, uh, who was uh, worked out of Angleton's office. David Morales always told the truth. He said, I was in Dallas when we got the son of a bitch, and I was in Los Angeles when we got the little bastard. Sorry, I'm swearing here, but uh, Morales talked like that. So there are three main suspects. Now, let's talk about witnesses. James Worrell parks his motorcycle behind the motor the depository. He said, I saw a man kind of rushing out of the depository about five feet seven to five ten. I had dark hair and a dark sports coat. Oswald didn't have a sports coat. So Worrell saw someone leaving the depository hurriedly. Richard Randolph Carr saw a man on the top floor of the depository with horned rim glasses. Well, who could that be? Later, he saw the same man in a hurry looking over his shoulder, leaving the depository. That's another interesting witness, is it not? 
And this witness I liked a lot here. He and his wife were standing there 10 minutes before Kennedy came. They looked up and they saw a dark complected man with a rifle in the depository window. And he thought that was a secret. She pointed out to his wife, see, that's the secret service. No, that's President Kennedy's assassin. Okay. Three witnesses. Interesting. So here are the most likely assassins who killed John F. Kennedy. Charles Nicoletti in the Deltex building, Richard Kane in the depository, James Files in the Grassy Knoll, David Morales, we don't know, probably depository. Johnny Rosselli didn't shoot. He was just there to see everything was working fine. Now there was an acoustic analysis of, of Dick DeBelt with the, you've heard this story, a motorcycle patrolman's radio was on. They studied it. They discovered, they sent it out for two scientific investigations. The government said, no, no, no. But the it's likely there were five shots altogether, not three. So with the Warren Commission on uh, having destroyed documents, altered documents, whitewashed this and that, we really can't trust evidence that has been supplied by the Warren Commission. If we grant that point, uh, then we have to ask who actually did shoot Officer Tippett uh, as Oswald was going towards 